This is going to be a quick tutorial on how to use the drag and drop image editor called Stencil. I mean, there's a couple other editors on the market such as Canva and Snappa, but I like Stencil a lot because it's very simple to use. And if you want to give it a try, uh, there's a free plan. You get up to 10 images uh, a month and you can just give it a whirl and see if you like it. So go ahead and sign up for the free trial, log in, and you'll be creating social media images in no time. I'm actually going to show you just some simple ways to do something um, that, you know, even if you're not a designer or, or even creative, it, anybody can really do this. It's super, sim super simple the way they have it streamlined. So you're in the interface here and you are presented with a bunch of different photos and there's 1.5 million royalty free photos to choose from. So we're going to look for something um, that like maybe an ax. That's a little scary. And we're going to go ahead and just click on the image that you want. And when you click on it, it brings the image right out into the canvas. So I don't know, I'm just going to maybe drag this one over. So it covers maybe two thirds of the photo. You know, the ax is kind of maybe at that final quadrant. So I mean, you could center it up that could look cool, but I want to see more of the axe. So I'm just going to kind of drag it over. So it's maybe covering about two thirds of the photo. And that's one of the things that you're really going to notice with any design is that, you know, you usually have something where it's covering one half of the photo. It's maybe covering one third of the photo or it's covering two thirds of the photo. So a lot of images or layouts that you see in design will have some of those different variations. So you just got to kind of play with what you, feels good to your eye. And for me, I like the, the two thirds look at least for this one, because I can see a lot of the ax. And you know, the image is important, but it's not the most important. If you're going to be putting quotes on here, it's really going to be about the message. So let's get on with it. We've got the image picked out. Let's go ahead and put a quote on here. So on the left hand side, you'll see a navigation where it says photos, icons, templates and quotes. So we're going to go ahead, go into quotes. And what's cool is I have 100,000 quotes loaded up, which is make makes it really easy. So we'll type in X and see what we can find. Maybe something from Abraham. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to click on that, the quote here from Abraham Lincoln. It's a little bit shorter, about three lines of text. I mean, if it gets to be too long, it's just hard for people to read in social media. I prefer shorter quotes, but this one will do just fine. Um, when I clicked on it, you can see it brought it over and put it on the canvas, but you can't see it. So let's go ahead and change the text color here. You can see that the text is selected. Let's change that to white and it's not quite white. I mean, the hex color here, which you can change, um, is six Fs, and that would be a, a, a pure white, as white as you can get it. So the other thing we want to do is make it readable. Right now, it's not big enough, and the font really isn't um, conducive to, to reading. And also, you see that it automatically brought in a little bit smaller uh, piece of text for the, the name. And I'm just going to go ahead and move this name down. Um, yeah, let's just drag this way down. It's kind of nice. It gives you the center line as a guide so you kind of know you're on center there. So let's go back up to this and let's make it a more readable font. So this font is a hand scripted font and it's also called a serif font where it actually has like tails to it. Um, you can kind of see the tails um, as the, the at the tips and the bottoms of the text. So that would be considered a serif font. The other fonts that you are probably used to are sans serif fonts, which means it doesn't have that tail, the sans meaning no um, tail. And that would be like a an Arial. So for example, you could go to something like an impact font and that would be a sans serif font, sort of a classification, the basic classifications of fonts being sans serif and serif. And it's just a lot more readable. And let's go ahead and bump up the text size so you can see it here. And I mean, the impact font is okay. I don't really like the impact font. Uh, let's go ahead and pick something else out here. One of the fonts that I do like uh, just for the feel is permanent marker. It just kind of has a little bit of a handwritten feel to it, but it's also 
uh, just cool. It has some style to it. So let's go ahead and bump that size down a little bit so you can see this is a sans serif font but it feels still like it's handwritten because it's in permanent marker and it's very readable I mean I, when I see this quickly let's say in an Instagram feed or on Facebook I'll be able to read it and understand it no problem uh, we'll go ahead and fix the contrast between this photo background and the text to make it even more readable here in a little bit so the next thing we want to do is work on this name and making the Abraham Lincoln a little bit more readable. And one of the things in design that you'll notice a lot of uh, people do is if there are a couple different hierarchies of fonts, so we've got the first hierarchy being this larger font um, and a, um, the permanent marker, and it's the sans serif, uh, you'll, also, you'll see those paired with the opposite so most likely instead of a sans serif it would probably be a serif font that's more handwritten with the kind of the tails on the end of it so this would be one of those fonts let's change that to white and, you know it's in the serif font already but I don't really like this font to be honest with you uh, one of the ones I like in here is here we go homemade apple so that font's kind of cool. I mean, it doesn't have to be super readable. I mean, people are probably going to recognize that name anyway. It just has that personal signature feel to it. So I'm going to go ahead and work with that. So we've got our hierarchies of fonts set up here. Uh, we've got the um, we've got the sans serif font here, which is the permanent marker, and we have the serif font here, which is the homemade apple and it's the a, a, the second hierarchy so you've got a kind of a nice font duo a good pairing here uh, where your eye focuses on the message and it's just real subtle on the signature so now we need to put some contrast between this background and the actual text so one of the things that I like to do is bring in my brand's color or you'll want to even bring in your brand's color and one of the easiest ways to do that with um, a drag and drop editor like this is go ahead and make it black and white and then we're gonna add some color to it to give it a little bit more pop one of the things to do uh, if you want to add some color to it is we'll add a color overlay and I don't know what your color scheme is, but if you have one, use it. Otherwise, if you need a color scheme, I recommend you go to color.adobe.com and click on Explore. And what you're going to see are the most popular color palettes that have been selected for the month, and you can also select all time. And I'm just going to you know, look at maybe creating a color palette similar to this fall leaves one here. So I'm going to maybe look at the yellows and oranges and maybe this deep sort of, um, you know, red. So let's go ahead and go in here. I'm just going to all eyeball this. I mean, you can plug in the exact hex colors if you want. I just want to try to eyeball it and see what I can come up with. So on this background here, the color overlay, what I'm going to do is just bump this overlay up a little bit. And you can see it automatically put a black overlay. So as the darker you make it, uh, you, you know the more contrast there is with the text so let's just bring that down I don't know maybe to around 25 and I just want this to be to be super subtle so I'm gonna go in here and that deep red color I'm just gonna add that to the background oh it's gonna be a little bit darker I want it to be super subtle and let's go ahead and mess with this a little bit So that just gives me a little bit of red because I just don't want it to be just black and white. There's just too much black and light, white out there. It's just a little too plain. I want to give a little bit of subtle visual interest. And that's going to make more sense once we actually bring in a little bit more color here. So one of the next things uh, we can do to bring in some color and make this look more unique is grab some shapes. Now we'll go to icons and 
They've got square circles and you can search for a bunch of different things. But let's go ahead and grab this square and pull that down. And okay, let's put it in there. Now let's click on Abraham Lincoln and let's move that forward. I want to keep clicking it until it comes in front of this. And then I'm just going to drag this and then let's just drag it and find that center line. You can see that the guides show up there. So let's stop it right there. And now let's go ahead and grab that an orange color for that background. You remember that color palette I showed you? Let's just kind of pop back over there. We're maybe going to go for something a little bit more in the middle here. So grab. Yeah, that's close enough. All right, so we've got now some color. You know, that would be your brand's color. Uh, and don't worry, you're not going to have to do this every time. You can save this as a template once you kind of get something um, down that you like. So we've got a little bit of color, some contrast. We can see this image really well. And you can now see where that color, the background, kind of comes in. You know, it's not just black and white. People kind of see it, and they can see that little bit of a, a red tint to it. And maybe I'll mess with it just a little bit more. I mean, it's super subtle, I know, but it does. Some of those the details really go a long ways. It really goes well you know, with this, this orange color. Now, you could stop here and save this or even save it as a template. So you can hit this arrow here, save it as a template so you'd have it for the future so you don't have to redo everything that I just did. Or you can just save it and post it. Go ahead and preview it and share it on social media. But I'm just going to show you a couple other fun things you can do. If you want to get fancy with it, you could, let's say, type line up here. And I forgot to hit return. Let's go ahead and just grab a line. And I don't know. Let's just throw it down here. Let's go ahead and grab that. I want to flip that line, so I'm going to flip it vertically, and it changes the direction there. And we're just going to throw a couple of lines down there. Maybe we'll do it in this sort of yellow, orange, and then a little bit darker orange color and see how that looks. So we'll go yellow with this. And it's not going to be exact, so what I'm going to do is click on that, duplicate it, and move it up you can do a little bit more of an orange color kind of just moving down and then let's go ahead and that's uh, a little bit more orange maybe but you get the idea and i'm just going to use my arrows on my keyboard to kind of move this around make sure i get that all right, that's kind of cool. And let's go ahead and just duplicate this. And now let's just do a little bit more of a, maybe we should do the red color instead of another orange. Let's see what that would look like. And now these are just kind of details that you don't have to do, but it's just kind of fun to play around with it, especially if you're just going to be able to kind of use it over and over and over again. So let's go ahead and turn this to a little bit darker. red there you go I kind of like that that's cool so it kind of has this also this dark corner which is nice and just adds a little bit of vi visual interest to the corner so it looks a little bit more branded a little bit more unique I don't know design is really subtle so you could hate it as well but um, play around come up with something that you like sometimes just keep it at simple is is the best thing but do what works for you